good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jade from the Tableau Public team. I'm based in Paris, so it's actually a good afternoon for me. And well, I wish good evening to anyone in Asia if, uh, if some participants are from there. I'm super happy to conduct this webinar today. And I see there are quite a, a few of you, so that's really great. Um, all right, so let's get started with the viz. It was in the, in the invitation you received, but here it is again. So this is what it looks like uh, when you open it. And then it has quite a bit of interactivity that I will explain. But first, I wanted to give you a bit of background about the visualization because it's in French and I guess most of you cannot understand it. So. As you may know, uh, France will hold its presidential elections in May 2017. So in France, the president is elected directly by the people in a two rounds election. And anyone who manages to gather more than 500 signatures from French mayors can be a candidate in the first round. Then the two candidates who come out with most votes in the first round compete in a second round. And we can get a lot of candidates in the first round because what you need to do to be a candidate is only to gather signatures from mayors, city mayors, and we have like 36,000 cities in, in France. So that gives you plenty of potential for getting the signatures. So I think in 2002, we had 16 participants. So th this is uh, as, as big as it has gotten so far. But the two main parties, which are the Republicans and the Socialist parties, they have been organizing primaries, US style, uh, since I think 10 years or so. So what you are looking at now are the seven candidates of the Republican party who competed in their party's primary. An important note is that this primary was opened for all citizens to vote not only those who had a membership card, but also anyone um, anyone who doesn't really support the Republican Party usually. So there was a big number of people potentially interested in understanding the candidates' programs as they do not ordinarily follow the Republican Party. This is why I started collecting the tweets of all seven Republican candidates on October 17, and I created this visualization in late October just before heading out on holidays. So it was really important for me that this viz would continue updating automatically while I was away. I will tell you in a minute how I did it. Uh, we'll see the technical uh, bits later. Uh, but first, the idea behind this viz. So I had several questions uh, in my mind. The main one was that nowadays, it was an observation, uh, that nowadays politicians like to communicate their, their ideas via Twitter. So we've seen it with Donald Trump, but it's the case in many other democracies or not so much democracies. Um, so this is just a sample of uh, world leaders that are using Twitter. So you have Trump, Enrique Peña Nieto, the president of Mexico, François Hollande, the president of France, uh, Joko Widodo, the president of, of Indonesia, Modi in India, and Shinzo Abe in Japan. So all of these uh, politicians are more and more relying on Twitter as a platform to share their ideas. And so it made sense to me that they should be responsible of their ideas. Um, and this is why I wanted to find a way to collect what they say on Twitter so that and, and to organize it so that we can keep track of, of what they say. Um, so I wanted to build a tool that would let you choose a theme, for instance, and compare how the candidates uh, position on this theme and easily see what are their priorities. So this is why I implemented this, uh, this parameter that I can tell you a little bit more later. So for instance, if I want to know, um, let's say, which politician is really, really um, strong on police, like wants to improve, increase the number of police officers, I can just filter on police. And then 
I have the ability to check tweet by tweet what they said about the police. So I'll translate one or two so that you get the idea. Um, so this one by Nicolas Sarkozy on 27th of October. Shame on the collective ur urgency, the killing police. By insulting the police of the Republic, they're insulting 60 millions of French citizens. So he's taking a strong stand on supporting the police. And some are less, um, how to say, less support. Like they're all supporting the police because they're Republicans, but some of them are more moderate in the way they express this. Uh, this one by Alain Juppé, for instance, is just a hashtag, I support the police, and I want to reestablish the authority of the state and of the, the uh, order control everywhere in France to, gar to guarantee the security every day. So that's more of a moderate position. And, but still, I see that uh, Alain Juppé has been using the word police in more tweets than Mr. Sarkozy. And the one that has been mentioning the police the most is François Fillon. And I don't want to, maybe you, you already know, but I don't want to reveal you now who won this uh, primary. I'll tell, you in a, I'll tell you in a while. And yeah, I, I might be interested also on what they say on immigration. So I see that again, François Fillon is the one has, who's been talking the most about immigration. Um, and Nicolas Sarkozy follows closely while others have been maybe trying to avoid the theme or they've used uh, or they've talked about immigration, but not mentioning the word in their tweets, which is also a bias of, of this visualization. Um, I also had some research questions, uh, one inspired by a viral data journalism piece about Donald Trump's tweet, tweets a few months ago. So if I show you the article, it was this one. Uh, and this guy did a thorough analysis of Donald Trump's tweets to, to try to guess who were his own tweets and which ones were, were tweeted by his team. So he found that the Android tweets, which, which are usually the angriest, come from Trump's own Android and that the rest, the ones that are tweeted from an iPhone, came from his team. So that's pretty cool. And I wanted to see if I could find similar patterns. So it's a bit difficult to see. Um, this is why I, I decided to, in addition to the bar chart, to have this uh, area chart that would help follow any peak or low in the tweet uh, amount. So it's, it's quite difficult to draw some conclusions. Uh, maybe the only thing I can draw from this is that François Fillon took the long weekend of All Saints of Halloween to get some rest because he's not been tweeting a lot. And another observation is that since the, the primaries is over, they've all stopped tweeting that much. So the primary ended on 27th of October. And if you look at their tweets, it's almost flat from there on. So yeah, I couldn't be as brilliant as this uh, data journalist, but I tried. And another question was whether the most active on Twitter would have an advantage over the rest. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. I've got the, the results of the first round because the second one was only with the first two. So the interesting one would be the first round to see if tweeting a lot helps you win a lot of uh, voices. Uh, but I'd like to put an end to the to the suspense and let you know that François Fillon won the primary, so he will be the candidate of the the Republicans at the May 2017 election. And the running up was uh, Alain Juppé. He managed to get to the second round, but was beaten uh, at the second round. All right, so this was just to give you a bit of an idea of what were my thoughts when I created these Vs and also showing you what's the interactivity that came up following these, these questions and these thoughts. And now I would like to tell you a bit more about what's behind the Vs. So how did I manage to get the, the tweets? And how did I manage to get this visualization to update automatically? Because if you see here, 
Um, it's been updated lastly at 12 a.m. today. So obviously I, I'm not on my computer every night at 12 a.m. sharp trying to update this viz. It's just a, a new functionality that we got in Tableau Public 10. And I'll, I'll tell you how to do that for your own visualizations. So I've got a few slides to tell you about the data flow. Um, so here is what I use to collect the tweets. It's an online application called IFT that lets you connect different applications. Um, and I realized that I haven't asked if you had any questions so far. So let me just have a look and see if people are talking. Someone not able to hear. Um, well, that happens. Uh, while I answer to that guy who couldn't connect to audio, I let you ask me questions if you have any or comments so far. Uh, just give me 15 seconds and I'll be back to you. All right. So, okay, so IFT is this uh, great web application that I can show you. So it looks like this. And there are like so many apps that you can connect. You can have your Instagram linked to your Facebook or your smartwatch linked to whatever. And what I did is I linked Twitter. So this is a very animated slide. I linked Twitter to Google Sheets. And so the formula I used is if new tweet by specific user, and there you enter the, the how do you call that, the handle of that person, then add row to spreadsheet in my Gmail Google Drive. So what's, what it means uh, practically is that when Nicolas Sarkozy tweeted this uh, after losing on November 27, I got a line telling me at what time he tweeted and the link to the tweet and the text, etc. What I do with this is that I just welcome all these tweets in several Google Sheets. So I have several, seven individual files, one for each candidate. And the problem is that if I have seven different files, I will, I will not be able to union them uh, in Tableau Public. So what you need to do is to gather all these files into one master file. To do this, you will just need the, the import range formula. Um, so here is what it looks like. This is my Google Drive. This is Alain Juppé's individual Google Sheet. And then this is the file where I collect everything. And so for all of them, I use this import range. So what you need for the import range is the code, the unique code of each of your sheet, which is this one. Uh, so all your sheets will have an, a URL that's like this, google.com spreadsheet slash d slash unique code slash edit, blah, blah, blah. So you take the, un the unique code and you put it as the first parameter between the um, brackets, between those two guys and then to have the the whole sheet um because i don't want it to stop right i i my tweets keep on adding uh, day after day so i don't want to put an end to that so what i do is i say it's i'm talking about sheet one so this sheet and i want you to start at a1 of that sheet so a1 sorry Go back to A1 and take the whole D column. So this is why there is no there is no digit after D. I just want the whole D column wherever it ends. I don't put an end uh, row. And I obviously do this for all of my candidates. And this is how I get this master master file with all their data. 
And once I have this, I just have to use the ability of um, Tableau, Tableau version 10 to directly connect to a Google Sheet. So when you open Tableau Public or Tableau, you go to the Connect panel and you will have this Google Sheet section. Once you click on it, you will be asked to enter your email and then your password and then to say that you allow Tableau to connect to your sheets. And you, you then have to find your sheet uh, inside your Google Drive. So I would just have to type in the search, uh, the search bar, candidates, blah, 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 the name of my spreadsheet. So candidates, primaire droite. And I would be able to find my sheet and, and connect to it. Next step is you build your visualization. And then the only difference uh, with a normal visualization building and and publishing is that when you publish a Google, like um, a visualization that is connected to a Google Sheet, you will have this uh, box that you can tick and it says, keep my data in sync with Google Sheets and embed my Google credentials. Don't worry about your Google credentials. We've made sure that nothing will be shown. It's just that you allow uh, Tableau Public to keep getting the data whenever it's updated on your Google Sheet. And uh, once you publish, so you know when you publish in Tableau, you will always have a web browser page that opens and shows you the visualization published. If you go to the bottom of this page, you will see that it's a bit different from a normal visualization in the sense that you have this Google Sheets part that says when the data was last updated. I showed it to you on my viz earlier. And if you're connected to your profile, then you will have this request update button available. So it means that if one day you have to work on a project that is uh, that needs refresh, refreshing, refreshment, refreshing more than once uh, a day, you you might like you would be able to refresh it every hour as long as you click on that button. All right. So back to our visualization. Um, yeah, some stuff that I wanted to share with you uh, because when you build a visualization that will update automatically, you have to take into account few stuff like the fact that you need to leave enough space, for instance, on this one. The bar chart wasn't a problem because it will the axis will automatically update to let the, the the whole visualization be shown. But this one, for instance, I had initially set it up as a Tetris-like bar chart. So I had it was a bar chart, but then I put every individual tweet on detail, like I put text uh, tweet text on detail. So it looked like a Tetris at the beginning. It was quite cute. Um, so it would show like, let's say on that day where there are 18 tweets, it would show 18 small bricks. But then as time passed and as tweets became more numerous, then it was completely impossible to see, um, to see the, the, the color, even the color, because the only thing I could see was the border, the gray border of my bricks. So I, Actually, my colleague Florian told me, yeah, it, it doesn't look that good. So can you think of any other way of showing it? And that's when I came up with the stacked area uh, area chart. Uh, OK, I just saw a question. So sorry to interrupt the flow. Uh, it was about if, so I prefer to answer it now. So the question is, with this solution, if you have to follow the user that you want to analyze, um, no, I don't think you have to. I, I don't think I'm following. Yeah, I'm not following Donald Trump and I've been gathering his tweets for another project. So you don't have to follow that person. Uh, what you need to do, though, is to connect, of course, your Twitter account and your Google account to IFT. But that's quite clear. Like when you when you start using IFT, it's quite uh, intuitive and it will tell you which authorizations it needs to to apply the recipes that you want. 
Uh, okay, so back to the viz. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's one thing you have to take into account, like the axis. Don't put a fixed end to your axis until you have a good reason to do so. Um, initially, I put an end to the to this axis on 27th of November because that was the second run of the election. But then to show you that the VIS keeps auto, uh, keeps automatically updating, I increased, I, I quit the fixed axis and I put it automatic so it keeps moving. All right. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about the design. Um, I thought that the bar chart would be a good, like I, I wanted to see if tweeting more would give you more chances to be elected. Like is, is the better, like is the, not better, but um, most frenetic Twitter the most likely to be elected? You might think that yes, because François Fillon who won is actually the first one in terms of number of tweets. But I'll show you in a minute when I open the file that actually the, it, it doesn't really apply for the rest. Um, so this is why I, I really wanted to keep this bar chart, even though the information is not really very important and it takes a lot of uh, real estate on, on the visualization, but it still answered that question. And then um, I told you, right, so this was a Tetris packed bar chart and I had to move it to a, to an area chart and the idea is the idea was to follow the frequency and um, if there was any pattern like do they tend to tweet more on whatever weekend or Thursdays or something but it's I mean if I wanted to make this analysis I would probably have to stack them all on one on one single chart as lines maybe and see if there is a pattern. Uh, but still you, you can see like when are the peaks and I could have added annotations to, to say uh, what happened on that specific day when, when it's peaking. And then, oh, for this, the theme selection. So that's an interesting one. And I think I should open the workbook to show you. Because um, the themes are words that I decided to add. So this is the workbook. Um, and OK, so it must be this one. All right. So what I did is I created a parameter. So to create a parameter, you just need to go here, create parameter. Sorry, I'm in French. I'll keep in French, it's OK, it's, it's the same. So create parameter, and then you decide whether it's a float or, a, or an integer or a string. So I said it's a string. I said that I was looking at the theme. So I'll call it topic, this one. And then I said it's a list. And I added all the words that I wanted to look to look up inside the tweets. So it's very subjective. And actually, if I had gathered uh, more insight from, like, I don't know, politic politician, uh, political journalists, I may have come up with an even more relevant set of words. But this is basically how I did. Um, so you can put in every, anything that you want. Like if, if we were looking at uh, tweets from the US, I could put health, I could put security, etc. And then I just show my par sorry, I just show my parameter, uh, display the, the parameter, I guess. And I have a formula that uses this parameter. So it's a very simple formula that opened here. It's if contains, so if my tweet contains the word that I put in my parameter, so here it would be topic, then um, then true or false. This one is just in case because I, I also have the, the possibility to put all the all the, the tweets without filtering on any given word. So this is why I had to add this bit. So this bit uh, translated with our English parameter would be if or topic is all then true, otherwise false. 
that's a very simple one and I can copy it. I, I can uh, share it with you uh, in, the, in, the chat, uh, in the chat box later on if you want me to. And so that's it with this simple formula. I was able to filter the tweets on given words that I thought were relevant to understand the program of these uh, candidates. Um, good, good. So what's next? Oh yeah, one, one problem with this, uh, because it's not really text mining, is that for instance, at the beginning, I wanted to follow culture. And among the tweets that I got were the tweets of agriculture. So I was, uh, I, I gave up finding a better solution and, and I just followed the agriculture tweets instead of the culture tweets. So I guess when you create this kind of parameters, you need to have a bit of a, of a look at how it evolves and see if there is any problem. Um, all right, so back to the visualization. Then I decided to have a single bubble for every tweet because I thought it was easy to, to read and especially on a desktop, not so much on a phone, I, I admit, but it's super easy to go from bubble to bubble and see what's the total number of tweets by each uh, candidate. And then to close on the design choices, uh, the colors, I it was difficult because they're all Republicans. And by the way, Republicans in French, they are blue and socialists are red, so opposite. Um, and yeah, I, I just went for the, the Tableau uh, native color palette that is quite good for contrast. And I didn't try to find a specific color for each candidate. And not much on the font side either. It's it's the Tableau uh, font that's vis that's uh, viewable on most devices. So I just went for the easy choice. Um, as we are getting closer to the end of the webinar, I'd like to leave some space for question. So my idea was to have five minutes about improvement ideas where, where you could contribute or I could share some uh, some ideas that I have to improve the viz but it's really up to you like if you have more technical questions I'm also ready to take them um, if you want more private interaction I can put back my slide so that you have my email address um, yeah so I open the time for question, give you maybe 30 seconds to start typing. If I don't see any question, I will move on to the, the last segment I prepared in case there would be no question. And it's about improvements. Okay, so I've got some nice comments. Thank you. And some question. Can you use a Sandex function or sounds like on the tweet values to capture typos? Uh, no, unfortunately, there is not yet this, uh, this kind of, uh, of functions in Tableau. What you would have to do, I guess, is try to catch different ways like inconsistent spelling, put it in your parameter maybe, or make a group, but there is no uh, native function to do that. If there are no questions, uh, I, would, I will show you first what was the result of the, pri of the first round of the primary. Uh, and feel free to leave it. I mean, we've already, we did the 30 minutes. So if you have something else, I won't take it personally. Um, so we were, okay. So this is the result. I think it would be better if I put them next to each other. And, oh, and that's weird. The colors are not matching. Let me check quickly. 
So Francois Fillon was purple and Juppé was green. Uh, sorry about that. Um, okay, Bruno Le Maire was blue. Jean-François Copé was orange. Natalia and Nicolas Sarkozy was red. Okay. So these are the results of the election. So you see that there is no strong correlation between um, between how many tweets and 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 the result. And here I put the filter uh, on this one on 27th of November to make sure that we only see what happened before the election. So Bruno Le Maire, who was tweeting the most, actually arrived. Uh, among the the last three, there is a like it seems that Jean-François Copé, who was not tweeting a lot, did arrive last. But for the rest, it's it's not a clear correlation. And so, talking about improve. Okay, so more questions. Um, do you know if it is possible to record the number of tweets and likes for to know the repercussion in the public? Um, N not with uh, ift but with tableau there is a um, there is a twitter connector so if we go to web data connectors okay let me open i think i'm on the the other version of tableau i'm on the the paying one but i'll, I'll show you it's also available on tableau public so this is tableau public and you have a web data connector that allows you to connect to Twitter. Uh, just give me one second, I need to find it. Twitter WDC. I'll look for it on the web. Uh, Twitter web data connector. All right. So there is this article by Tableau Junkie that has a Twitter web data connector. Uh, I can input it here. I input the address. I click OK and then I can follow a given term like uh, what's Donald Trump's handle again? Real Donald Trump. So if I do this and hopefully it will work because we're doing it live. The web data connector will help me retrieve the, all the tweets related to real Donald Trump using the API, and it will give me a, a retweet count, a user followers, a like, um, number of likes, etc. So there might be a way to combine an if formula and some frequent uh, checks using the web data connector. I'm not sure, like it would need a bit of work for sure. And then question, did you consider using date range selection to correlate volume of tweets just prior to voting to see if one and two were tweeting more at the end? Nope, I didn't do that. That's a really good idea. Um, I think, yeah, I guess I was just busy or there was not so much uh, motivation to do that once the election was over. But yeah, that's a really good idea and I'm taking notes. And well, uh, yeah, I understand the question. All right, more questions. Could you share your workbook? Uh, yeah, I will share the work. I mean, I will just share with you the where you can find it. So the, the Tableau public link. Uh, okay, I'll share it privately and I'll share it to all. I may, I've made it downloadable, but because it's using my Google Sheets, oh, I, okay, apparently it's not done. I will make it downloadable in the next five minutes. And if you want to play with it, uh, please send me an email on jlevan at tableau.com because I need to share with you the, um, the Google Sheets. So I need to give you access to that sheet. Um, High level, can you go over how you identified the content of each tweet? It asked, how did you determine they were agriculture related? Yeah, that's the problem of the, the viz actually. I, 
it was quite superficial, I must admit, because I don't really know if the if the content is uh, really agriculture related. So it might, it might just be that they are at the agriculture or something. Uh, they are on, I don't know, agriculture TV channel, and then they just put the hashtag and this will be enough to tag it as an agriculture tweet. But so if you if we go into details, um, yeah, we see that some of them do mention their position on agriculture. So for instance, this one by Alain Juppé, agriculture must remain one of the great chances for France to find back its uh, rank, its its position in Europe, and then he links to his proposals. This one is a bit more obscure, agriculture and sports, uh, video of my, of my stay in Tours. But yeah, I, I, these are the limits of the parameter. Another question in the themes was the difference between the tweets on the left and the right. Oh, this is just a timeline. Uh, I do agree that I could have left it. I just thought that if people have this timeline on, then they might, yeah, I, I, yeah. It was just for giving a bit more free space. And so this is what the horizontal axis is for. Um, okay. Is there a way to find themes from all Twitter users instead of particular user handles? Uh, yeah, that would be the one I showed you. So on a given topic, uh, the web data connector, I'll just sh I'll just share the link with everyone. Um, I'm getting lost in all of in all these pages. Okay, so I'll share the the link to the web data connector here. And that web data connector will let you look for a given handle or a given hashtag. So then, uh, oh, I shouldn't have went back. Um, yeah, I could have searched for uh, make America, uh, hashtag make America great again instead of real Donald Trump and then do an analysis of this. All right, I think I've handled the flow of questions. I'll stay here for another five minutes if you have more more questions. Um, on my side, it's pretty good. I can keep uh, talking about what I think could be done better for a next visualization. And there will be a next one because the Socialist Party will be doing its primary in France uh, in, in January. In, yeah, in January. Uh, one thing I think I could have done better would have been something like my colleague Sophie Sparks did which was to use annotations on her, because this is also showing the evolution of the number of tweets. So this was for Brexit. Uh, she was following the mentions of Brexit and Remain on social networks. And so she had also a vis that was updating every day. And then she would put this, uh, these annotations to tell you what happened on a given day when there was a peak. So for instance, Okay, this one, I remember there is one about the sad, yeah, okay. There is one about mentioning that Joe Cox was uh, murdered and, and there was a pose in the tweets to respect her memory. And then um, when there is govern government question time, uh, there there is a pic. So I'll just share the link with you as well. If you want to have a look, it's really good, good practice, uh, best practices of data journalism like this. Um, let me check questions. Can I build a Boolean query around the theme and capture conversations by using the query instead of a hashtag? Yeah, I think so. Oh, you mean in the web data connector? Um, I've never tried, so I would say you should try and see how it goes. Um, yeah, just try and you can email me and I can have a look into it. Okay, I can ask because this uh, Tableau junkie is actually a London Tableau employee, so I can also ask him directly or put you in touch with him if, if, uh, if it's too difficult to find the answer. Uh, 
okay. I see there are still a few of you connected. So another thing that I could have done to improve my viz would have been to use some shapes. Um, so I don't know if you've ever used shapes. Here it might look a bit ridiculous, but if I duplicate my sheet and duplicate my graph, I have the possibility to put this graph into shape mode, for lack of a better word, and then put the name of the candidates on the shapes. And then I have this uh, custom, this I have a file with custom shapes for the candidates, so I could have a small head of each of them um, and put it at the end of the bars. This is more if it was a standalone uh, chart. I get rid of the color, I make it bigger, and then I create a dual axis and put this one back to a bar, make, make the shapes even bigger, and make it full view, and yeah, get rid of the tags. Yeah, this is one thing I could have done. Sorry, I forgot to synchronize the axis. Sorry, I'm going super fast, but it's well documented on, on the internet. If you make a Google search on using icons and dual axis on Google, uh, Google search, uh, you will be able to, to see how to do it. And yeah, this could if it was a simple bar chart embedded in, in an article, it might be it might be useful to do it so that people quickly understand which candidate we're talking about. But I was just thinking it would be too much in this kind of visualization. All right, now we've reached the 5.45, which was my limit. So I'll just let you enjoy the rest of your day or evening. And let's be in touch if you have more questions. I show you one last time my email address and my Twitter and hope it gives you some ideas for projects following politicians or, or singers or whatever athletes and let me know if you do something with the uh, twitter and and google sheets thank you so much bye <laughs>